Good morning, Sun here. In last video, we discussed how to make Firefox more private and <sighs> I made a small mistake. So I'm gonna start this episode by fixing my mistake and then we're gonna be talking about why if you don't use a password manager, you will be hacked. First things first, if you pop Firefox open and go into preferences, then privacy and security, custom, Tracking content, unfortunately I had set that to only in private windows. This is a mistake, it should be in all windows. You want this to be enabled all the time. Now, putting this aside, there are two things that all security researchers agree on. Number one, you absolutely have to use a password manager. And number two, you must use two-factor authentication. Now in this episode, I'm gonna discuss how you guys should use a password manager and I'm gonna recommend one that's called MacPass. It's a free open source password manager that's available for Mac OS. Um, and in another episode, I'm gonna discuss how to set up 2FA in a secure way. Uh, if you guys don't know what 2FA is, you probably have had an email from a provider with a six digit code. That's two-factor authentication. We'll discuss this in another episode. If you're interested, smash that subscribe button and I'll see you later for that video. But first things first, password managers. Um, we'll start by downloading MacPass. The reason I chose MacPass is it's one of the best, sexier looking uh, apps on Mac that's open source and free. That being said, there are uh, other alternatives with better user experience. One of them that I really like is 1Password, but I'll discuss the pros and cons of 1Password in another episode. All right, so um, downloading Mac, downloading Mac Pass. Um, so as you can see, this is hosted on GitHub. So GitHub is a repository for open source code. It's a little weird, but if you go here at the bottom and you click on Mac Pass, it will download an archive that includes the app, and then you need to take the app and drag it to your applications folder. Once this is done, we can go ahead and close Firefox, and uh, using command spacebar, you can open Spotlight and then just tap type type Mac Pass. Whoa, enter. Okay, Mac Pass is an app downloaded from the internet. If you know where you downloaded it, which we do because we just got it off GitHub, we know it's legitimate, we can open that. And does it want to check for updates, plugin, blah, blah, blah. If you don't know what that means, and that applies to any app out there, always say no by default. And if ever you screwed something up, you can enable it later. So do not update definitions. Okay, so, um, First things first, we need to create what MacPass calls a database. Other password managers calls, call that a vault. Um, now the thing is, the database or the vault is essentially a container where all of your passwords that are generated using a random algorithm, all of them will be stored in that database or vault. And they're gonna be encrypted using something called a master password. That master password is critical. That is the single point of failure. If someone can crack that, they then have access to all of your passwords. Whew, I am talking fast. It's like if I'm doing cardio or something. I guess I have to slow down a bit. Whew, okay. So um, that master password is really important and it needs to be something that's very hard for hackers to crack. So you need to have something that's at least 28 characters long and something that is not predictable. And that's where remembering a 28 character long password becomes quite a problem for our minds. That's where uh, something that makes this easier is called a passphrase. So the difference between a password and a passphrase is usually a password is something that's pretty short and really easy to type in usually something that's also kind of random. So like, um, you know, like A7X comma, you know, whatever, one of those weird things. And 
that's fine. You can kind of remember something like this if it's like 12, 14 characters long, but when it gets to 28, man, man, that becomes a problem. So the alternative to that is a passphrase. A passphrase is a sentence that you create that is usually made up of six to 12 words. And ideally you choose words that are not in a dictionary. So keep that in mind. We'll go ahead and create a new database. And then we're gonna go ahead and lock it. And that means that it's saving that uh, database to the file system. So we're gonna choose a password and that's where we need to enter the passphrase, okay? So uh, let me pop open text edit and I'll show you an example of a good passphrase and why it's a good passphrase. So say I create a passphrase that is, whoop, the diddly woo woo. Whoa, you see how it's actually correcting me? That is where you don't want autocorrect. That means that the word is actually not in the dictionary. Say I'm trying to hack you. The first thing I'm gonna do is something we call a dictionary attack. Well, actually, coming backwards. The first thing I'm gonna do is use leak databases of passwords. Uh, LinkedIn is uh, an example. LinkedIn was hacked and there are huge databases of passwords out there where hackers can go on the dark net and download lists of million, millions of emails and their corresponding passwords. So if you use the same password for all of your accounts and that password is in that database, I'm in, I just hacked you. So the first thing you wanna do is use a password manager to mitigate that. You wanna have different passwords for all of your accounts and that's where the password manager is gonna help. Now, the second way I would try hacking you is by using something we call a dictionary attack. So I would use a dictionary, a dictionary with all kinds of words and I would try them one by one and then I would try combinations of words. That makes it way easier for me to brute force, um, not brute force, but hack a password that is say, like the dog is beautiful. You know, that's a terrible password because it's just three words. It's much faster for me to break a password like this than if it was random letters, numbers, and special characters. So you wanna use a passphrase that is made up of words that are not in a dictionary. So say we do the diddly, woo woo, and pong chung, okay? There is no way in earth that I'm gonna hack you with a dictionary attack if that's your password because those two words, they don't exist. And the fact that they don't exist, okay? And also the fact that that sentence is kind of memorable, the deedly woo woo and pong chong, you can easily make sense of that and remember it, means that I'm gonna to have to do what we call a brute force attack. And if I'm doing a brute force attack, that means that I'm gonna be trying all possible permutations of characters and doing that means it's gonna take a hell of a long time for me to actually succeed. Uh, I'm gonna have, in this case, I think it's 32 characters long. Uh, that means it will probably take forever. So I'm never gonna be able to brute force that password. I'm gonna to have to try a different scheme. So this is actually a really, really good passphrase. Now that passphrase is something you never wanna to write to your file system. So I would never wanna do file save and save that file somewhere on my computer. That needs to be written on a piece of paper and that's exactly what I did here. I don't know if the camera will focus, but that's what I did here when I was thinking about it. And when I wrote that, I made sure that my webcam was closed, my camera's on my phone, on my camera. And when I say closed, I mean I have a little shutter thing here that I can open and close. And, and on my phone, I actually have tape so I have tape and I actually masked the camera. So essentially I made sure that there's no cameras. I didn't say it out loud. I just wrote it on a piece of paper. And then you wanna go outside, put that in a metal bowl and burn the shit out of it. And making sure that it's in your head first, okay? So taking this and entering it here, change password. It's gonna ask me to save it. And then I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna call it P for instance. You don't want to call this something too obvious, but the extension for an experienced hacker will let them know that it's actually a password manager file, but we'll call it P for now and we'll save it on the desktop. I mean, that's a tutorial. Actually, saving it in documents is smarter, so 
We'll save it in documents. And now it's time to uh, log in again. So, and we're in. So um, now we're gonna create your first password. Say you wanna create a login for LinkedIn or say Reddit actually. You click on new entry and that's where we're gonna say, okay, so this is Reddit. My username is John Doe. And now it's time to have the password manager generate a unique password for that account. So you hit generate. Okay, and now obviously this is taking for granted. You already have a Reddit account. So you, you're going and you're gonna do a password change and you're gonna enter your current password that probably sucks and you're gonna replace it by the password that we're generating here. Now by default, MacPass will create a 12 uh, characters long password. That is not long enough. We absolutely wanna make that longer. Now, no need to go batshit crazy and do it 256 long. A lot of accounts won't even let you put a password that that's, that's long and, and hell, I mean, it doesn't change much. Uh, it, well, it obviously makes it harder to crack, but you know, I would say anything over 28 characters long is actually a really, really great start uh, from a security standpoint. Uh, but you can go longer, it's up to you, but anything over 24 will take a hell of a motivated hacker to get into your stuff. What you really wanna make sure though is that you're using small and big letters, numbers, and special characters, that makes it way harder for us to uh, use a brute force attack against the password. So once this is done, we can go ahead uh, and save it. So use password, and there we are. So we now have our first uh, account. Now you wanna do this for all of your accounts, generating a unique, completely random password for all of them. And now once this is done, if we go ahead and save it and we close this, we're done. And this, we want to close it, delete it. We want to make sure we burn the paper version of it and we're all set. Now, there's one really, really, really important thing you need to consider. When you use a password manager such as MacPass, you are being sovereign. You are holding the keys to your passwords. If you lose that file we created, the P file, you are, you, you've just lost all of your passwords. And if you're using 2FA, this will be the subject of another episode, so smash the subscribe button for that. If you're using 2FA with a vendor or a service provider that is serious about security and you lose your master password and you lose your 2FA, you just lost access to that account. So you wanna make sure you have great backups. Now backups is gonna be the subject of another episode, but for the time being, what I recommend, if you go in your finder and you open up um, your doc, woo, your da -da -da -da. <laughs> you open up your documents, this file, this is where all your passwords are stored. I highly recommend using a USB stick or, uh, and if you want USB sticks, I'll put two links in the description. I don't have enough subscribers yet to actually have Amazon affiliate links. So this is really not a question of earning a revenue on these. I really love the Samsung. I don't know if this is gonna focus, hopefully it will. The Samsung bar. This is a waterproof, rugged USB stick. And the other alternative that I love when I go running is, actually, let me see, not sure if this is gonna focus, but SanDisk SD cards. You know, this series, this is the Extreme Pro series, is waterproof, dustproof, x-ray proof. So those are things that you can put in water and they're gonna be totally fine. So you wanna take that P file and you wanna drag and drop it onto your backup. So I'll simulate that for you. Give me a second, I need to get a USB key. So I'm using a little Samsung bar here. If I put it in my computer, I'm not sure what's on it, so you'll have to uh, bear with me for a second here. Um, okay, so it's here. It's actually empty, which is perfect. So I just take that file, I drag and drop it here, and then I eject my key. 
That means that I can bring this with me anywhere I go, and that's actually what I do. I have my little keychain here, and that will be also the subject of another video, but I have my YubiKey for 2FA, and I have my little Samsung bar with backups. So this is on my keychain. This comes with me all the time. And if I go running and I don't want to bring my big keychain, I also have a redundant backup on my little SD card that's waterproof and everything. So there you have it, guys. This is really, really important. You absolutely want to be using a password manager. You want to have phenomenal backups for your password manager because that's really mission critical. And in I'm not sure if it's the next episode, but pretty shortly we'll be talking about two-factor authentication and why using a password manager with 2FA when done properly is the best thing you guys can do to not get hacked. So again, if you're interested by privacy and security, smash the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.